ideally you use a pair of um jump up that's so so gonna break bits of this it's my patience head and head end and my patience tail end hey friends it's may welcome back to the channel today we'll be doing some citrine together um i hope you're really excited if you're at vet school or thinking about being a vet these are some simple suture techniques that i use on my day-to-day -day job in routine neutering space and um, dentistry lump removals and um, surgeries basically so if you have a suture kit you can definitely get these on amazon i'll link one down below usually it comes with some suture material as well but my previous practice had some expired suture material here which i will show you um here <laughs> so let's see when did they actually buy me? Ah, so yeah, here it says 2018. So basically, you could even ring around your neighboring vet practices if you have a good relationship with them, just to see if they have any spare expired suture material lying around because you can't, we can't use it anymore if it's expired, so might as well use it for education. So we've got that aside, and this is my suture kit. We have um, a pair of scissors and hemostats. So usually you need to use needle holders to hold your needles um, but I don't have a needle holder at home so I'm just going to be using this hemostat um, but I'll show you a picture of what a needle holder looks like Okay, so this is like super basic You obviously learn everything in more in depth at vet school but we can just run through some of the basic techniques here just for fun uh, and so you can follow along This is not going to be as close to the life animal but I would say it's good enough to start practicing your simple techniques So. I've waffled on for a bit too long, <laughs> let's get started shall we? So the first one I wanted to share with you is the Miller's Knot. I think sometimes it's also referred to as the modified Miller's Knot. This is a knot that I use every single time in my castrations or spays, um, especially when you do like a dog spay. That's one of the more nerve-wracking surgeries because of it's like in a major abdominal surgery, you know, in a large dog, um, risk of bleeding is quite high if you're not too careful so i really like the miller's knot because it really has a good knot security uh, and this was taught to me by my previous boss in my previous practice and um, she's really cool so if you make a you can even get like a shoelace or like something string type um, that's a little bit thicker to mimic like the suspensory ligament for example i also use it in tying off like the spermatic bundle in dog castrates um, it's just a nice knot to just get used to doing also if you have needles at home make sure you dispose them in a sharp spin and um, dispose it responsibly basically so to make it easy to start with i would take a short piece of suture material like this see if you can see and just cut it here so you don't need too long of a suture material to start with and this is what i use to practice with in my early stages so for example if i am facing patient this will be my patient's head end head end and my patient's tail end um so cranial caudal um and my patient is up on the table i want to go under here and then under again. So you can see there's like a loop like this. So you can see there's like a loop essentially like this. And then you just go over each other. Okay, so once you've done your Miller's knot like this, then you would just go and tie more square knots on top. So what that can look like is if you use hand ties, so you just go over like this with your hand and then go over to the other side and then go like this and this way. Whoops, underneath here. And then go down the side like this or if you are using your instruments then you would do like this pull it this way or go over your um instrument grab it at the tail end and then tighten it this way 
and you just repeat that and I tend to do about seven to eight throws just for knot security. Every time you lay your knot down, you want to try and tighten it as best you can because you can think that the suspensory ovarian suspensory sus ovarian suspensory ligament is very chunky. So you want to make sure you pull tight. But one thing that I've learned is that if you pull from the far ends, so like the distal ends of the suture material, they can snap because of the tension so try to go close down to your knots press down and like tighten this way instead of like pulling here so you tighten it this way so it's nice and steady so we'll do that again short pieces of material like this and then you can use your instruments to help you in here Okay, and then go under again, this way. Cool. And then go over each other. Like that. Oh wait, that doesn't look right. Let's try again. It's easier to show you like this. So you got your loop again, like this, and then go over it, Let's move this out of the way, and then go underneath like this, like that, and this is the knot, it should look like this, sometimes you may accidentally do that and then that's not, that's not what you want, you want this so it looks nice and it lays nice and steady on here. As we said, tighten the knot here first and then keep going with your uh, instrument to tie another knot, basically. Okay. Like this. Here you go. Oops. Okay, so there you have it. In dog castrate space and things, I tend to use a um, absorbable monofilament suture material. So that tends to be like your PDS um, or monoline, depending on what sort of brand that you use in your practice. Okay, so before I go on to the other knots to share, I should probably do a recap on um, your basic surgeon's knot and square knot, which is what everyone tends to start out with. So if you want to do your basic um, square knot and surgeon's knot, listen up. <laughs> so we will use this sort of area here and basically just tie a knot. You want to use your needle holders. Again, these are hemostats, so sorry. Um, you're going to grab your needle like this here. And then ideally you use a pair of um, four steps, wrap two four steps. I don't think I have any. No, I'm afraid I don't have that, but it's okay because we're not grabbing live tissue, we're just holding, steadying this base. So what you want to do is go deep into the tissue and come out the other way and then use your needle holder to grab. Okay, so your square knot is basically... Oops, I'm trying to escape them. Your square knot is basically like one throw. Grab it on this end and then lay it down. So you can grab another one, uh, do, do it again. So over this way, grab this and then pull. So this second knot will tighten the first knot that you have. If you pull it even, even tighter, I think we reached the end of the pad. So that's it. And then just repeat that one throw, square knot, another throw, oops. Square knot, another throw, square knot, that's it, and that's your square knot. It's a simple interrupted suture, this is what it's called, which means there's only one suture. So then you can just trim the suture material, I like to leave the ears a little bit long, depending on what your goal is. If it's to be able to be removed at a post-op check, then leave it a bit longer. 
now we'll do surgeon's dot it's the same again go deep into the tissue and then out superficial and surgeon's knot basically means you throw twice so i'll show you again you go one it's like a square and you go two so that's it surgeon's knot grab hold of this and then lay it down here only for the first one the second one you just do one throw like this and you continue again okay that's it so you can keep going as well until you get the hang of it don't worry when i first started it was at vet school it was very like oh cat handed i don't know what i'm doing but it gets easier everything is a muscle just need to practice it and then just trim off obviously it goes without saying that when you're doing surgery you need a pair of gloves and also um a gown <laughs> to be sterile but this is just practice so let's try again so let's start with a very big needle for a small one to go from here and you kind of want to take even bites so what that means is that if you look here this is your line this is where your cut was made so similar length here about half millimeter one, uh, one sorry one centimeter or half a centimeter each, either side and then pull all the way it's supposed to come out this way Okay, like this okay and then carry on this way okay like this So for example, let's say this is your last knot that you want and um, you can finish it off with like an Aberdeen knot. That's what I would usually do. So an Aberdeen knot basically means, let me just get rid of this here so it's not very distracting. Okay, so Aberdeen knot basically means is that you hold your suture like this and then you grab this one and you just pull the bottom bit. So pull the bottom bit like this, the bit that moves. So you just tighten it down. Might be more difficult in a model, but just keep trying. Two, three, four, five, six, and then to finish it, just take the needle, pass it through everything like that. So that's your knot there and you tend to bury it but in this case we don't really have a place to bury it in the sutra pad so you just you can just cut it off really or you can just imagine that you are burying it basically in some tissue like so so technically this should be buried under like some uh under the skin i'll show you i'll try to show you on an intradermal suture and then you just snip it off basically other ways to close that is like again tie your simple interrupted um 
not seen burnt up, sorry, tie your square knot or surgeon's knot again. So the next one to do is your transfixing and encircling. So these ones are very useful for, again, your um, tying off your uterus, your uterine horns. So imagine if there's like two uterine horns here, um, you're tying off the cervix in like a spade. And basically what transfixing is, is that you fix it on one end. And I will try to show you with this. So my colleague got me this as a farewell present. I will eat part of it and then show you how to do a transfixing with half of it. And let's see that if that actually works or not. So this is the only thing in my house that I could find that resembled a bit more chunky sort of thing. Besides this, this is too, this is too thin. So we're gonna take the marshmallow out. Oh my god. I do in my free time because why not oh wow so it's actually a whole lollipop so I might just have to take it all out or I could just take a chunk out like so so I'll break bits of this and then bits. maybe I should have done this before I started filming too late now Yikes. okay so for example this is part of our uterine horn that we want to ligate and if you can imagine the blood vessels are on one side and then the uterus is on the other side that would look like how it would look like in an animal so with a transfixing um suture ideally you want to go in between the like the uterus and the blood vessel there's usually like a small gap so for example if you can imagine just like that and then tie so basically like you're fixing the suture on the organ so that it doesn't like slip off so tie one square knot or surgeon's knot i've seen people do multiple things i use a square knot and then go to the other side of your organ so go to the side and then basically just tie another square knot or surgeon's knot Okay, so tie tight. So basically you've tied one here and you've tied another side there and then literally just continue your square knots. That's it. Your encircling knot would be encircling the structure. So you're literally going around here, encircling. You can do a Miller's again or how an encircling would look with a surgeon's knot again show you more clearly so one two two around the needle holder or hemostat in my case and then just pull all the way surgeon to encircling and you want to tie it tight 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 like nice and close and basically do the same which is your square knots. Okay. Okay, that's done. And then trim it off the same. Make a small cut. So you can see you have your exam for example like your epidermis layer at the top and your dermis underneath so if you can see there's like two layers essentially and what you want to do is you want to go deep to superficial and then superficial to deep which i will attempt to show you grab your needle holders if you start the at the commissure is i find it easier to do it when the patient is cranial caudal and then easy easier to do the intradermal from my right to left um, but everyone's different or even from top to bottom if the wound is facing this way so i'll just show you this way so what you want to do is you want to go deep first so deep in here i hope you can see deep to superficial but you're not don't come out here so that's not what you want the idea of intradermals is that you can't see it because it's under the skin so uh, 
try to come out it's a bit hard this material doesn't make it very easy so yeah like that I don't know if you can see it so if I pull all the way through, so deep to superficial first, you can see it's not on the orange bit, it's in like the, the white bit. Deep to superficial, and then superficial to deep. So go on to your other side. Superficial to deep. Might need to angle it a bit because this is a suture pad. Okay. So. Okay, so deep to superficial, deep to superficial, superficial to deep, and then you tie your knot, square knot is what I do. So you can see it's in there, you can't really see it, but like you want to go all the way down, down, down there. Usually I do about five, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then you cut this one really short so that you can bury it inside. So what you want to do to bury it is you hold your needles, bring it up close so you can see. So you go underneath the knot, okay, and then you want to come out at the commissure part. So as you can see, nope, that's too far. So you want to come out sort of like, not onto the orange bit, but still the white bit. So still in your dermis, like this. And then, so then, then you can see the knot is actually underneath, is buried. So then you take a bite on your epidermis, sort of dermis junction layer, which is here. It's clearer on the animal. It's, on the animal, you can see it's more of like a white bit of um, tissue. So, try to come out in this way. Again, we're not coming on top of the skin, but just underneath. So just a little deep to it and then pull it through like this. And repeat on the other side, like this. Okay. And you tend to go a little bit like, so you took a bite here and a bite here. So you go halfway this way. Try to ex show it on a piece of paper later to show you like this. Okay, so you see, you can't see it when you pull it all the way together. So keep going. And here, this is a cutting needle, which makes it a little bit easier. Okay. Oh. Just checking the time. Okay, 
So when you're close to the end, I think I can still take one bite here. That's fine. So when you're close to the end, you do your Aberdeen knot, as I explained a little bit earlier. So like this. So you take your last bite. Okay. So when you have your loop, remember what we did. So your loop is like this. And then you pull this with your second finger. Pull the bottom bit that moves, which is this bit. Yeah. And repeat that. Okay, and then pull your needle through and through. So you can see you've got your nice knot. I mean, this is way too long. <laughs> Usually you don't need to do so many, but I did it so that I could demonstrate. And then you just bury it underneath. So you go where you can see here, basically in here. Bury it deep, deep, deep because you don't want it to be out of the animal's skin. I don't know if this needle will come out. Yeah, so like that. You just pull all the way, see? So well, I mean, you're not supposed to come out this way if that happens. Try to fix it. Usually the tissue will stop it from going too far. So try to readjust it. But you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, you meant to bury it so you don't see any of this part. So yeah, there you go. Intradermal is done. <laughs>